world, but you chose to be here. For those that may be visiting with us locally, or maybe uh, tra have traveled from near and far to come here on uh, this afternoon, or maybe uh, you're a first time visitor. You're visiting with us for your first time, and you uh, have not uh, had an opportunity to really be exposed to what the Church of Christ is all about. Amen? Uh, if you're interested, we'll learn more about the Church of Christ and what we believe, uh, why we teach what we teach, and how to be a member of the church. Not necessarily how to join the church, uh, like the YMCA or the Boys and Girls Club, but how to be added to the body of Christ by obeying the gospel, uh, which is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, um, and then being baptized for the remission of your sins. Uh, you can do so by touching base with uh, the minister here, Brother Jones, and also some of the leaders here uh, as well. I just want to, uh, first of all, thank everyone that had the vision to bring me here, uh, Brother Jones. Uh, and Brother Priester uh, for uh, being highly involved. You may not know this, uh, but I arrived here this morning around 4 o'clock. I drove um, from Maryland, um, and I didn't get in until 4 a.m. Um, and then I had to get right up around 6.45. So you can imagine how much sleep I got, um, which I didn't get any. When Brother Priester called me, I said, he said, so uh, you, you, you enjoyed yourself? I said, I enjoyed that nap. <laughs> I said it was a good nap. And then when I looked at the program and seen I wasn't speaking until 10 o'clock, I said, brother, you could have you let me sleep all terrible for a couple more hours before you went and picked me up. And he started laughing, but, you know, glory to God, I want to say you want to, you know, uh, commend brothers like this that you have in the faith. Amen. I said this earlier that these workshops cost money. Workshops like this to this degree with this type of information, you're getting articles. I mean, you're getting uh, essential information to help you, biblical knowledge to attain, to learn, to, to equip yourself, to sing better, to praise God, to spread in the truth, and to enhance your worship service. People charge for this. Um, go online to Joel Olstein Ministries and see how much he charged you for stuff that ain't even biblical. <laughs> Did you hear me? Uh, go online to TDJ, the platform dollar, and, you know, good men, they could be good men, but doctrinal. They charge you an arm and a leg, and nothing they're saying is scripture. But then things that we have like this, mm -hmm. uh, which can encourage you, as I said before, not provoke you, but invoke you, allow you to voluntarily learn how to serve God more. We don't come to those things. We find those things to be boring. It's not up my alley. I'll see it the next time around. It's the first annual. It'll be another annual. I'll be to that. But we have to be able to be serious about God's business. Amen? Amen. Jesus said when Mary came back to look for him, when he was wandered off and she was wondering, where in the world is my son? When she came back, she found Jesus Christ where? In the temple. Talking to who? The doctors and the lawyers. And the Bible says that they were amazed by his abilities. And she asked him, she says, where have you been? We've been looking for you. And Jesus replied back to her, his need for me to be about my father's business. He wasn't talking about Joseph. He was talking about God. Yeah. Are you about your father? Mm -hmm. Remember I said it earlier, how much are you in love with God? Mm -hmm. Are you in love with God to the point that it drove you to be out here on a Saturday, you worked all day, you got kids, you're taking care of them, you know, you, you, you got personal issues and problems physically, things that have caused you to not be present, but because of your love for God and your faith for God, amen, you are here uh, with us on today. So I want to commend you and commend all these brothers that had the vision to allow you to be uh, here to learn more of what little Lamar Robinson has presented. I say little because in God's sight, that's what I am. I'm just a small inkling of a man. To him, I'm filthy rat. So when I know my place, there's more of a respondent than I am. All right? Amen? Amen? So what we want to do for those that came in a little later, may have missed the first session, I am a true believer to make sure that everyone is caught up. Um, we should be a, a community. We are a community of believers. And I want to most definitely make sure that everyone has an opportunity to uh, be caught up on all of the materials that we have presented thus far. So let's go through it real quickly. What is this, what is this workshop called again, church? The reason why we sing. The reason why we sing. Well, let's go through it really quickly. We talked about it. It's why do some sing. We're going to do this really quickly. Some sing because it's an expression. What are those expressions again, church? They're what? Happiness, enjoyment, thankfulness, appreciation, 
sadness, boredom, ability. Marvin Gaye is at the bottom because he had the ability to say. Some of us are gifted. Some of us have talents. Some of us have gifts. I believe that those two things are different. I truly believe that talent, all of us, we know we possess a talent. We all have talents. But to me, I believe that a gift is one that causes a movement. That gift that you have causes change. It invokes a movement. Some of us have talents. Some of us have a gift. So we, our expressions of singing is those are, I'll go back to it real quickly. Those expressions of singing, why do we sing? This is the naturalistic aspect of why we sing. All right, why we naturally sing. Okay, number two. Number two. And number two, we sing spiritually as Christians because, on our next slide, amen. We, 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 should, we should sing spiritually as Christians by these several things. Number one, by what? An act. To do something, a deed to perform. Number two, an allegiance, loyalty, or commitment. For what? To who? To the superior. All right? Number three, our what? Our commitment, the state of quality of being dedicated to a cause or activity. Number four, everyone, what? True worship. All right, God centered worship. You sing to God. Your worship should be centered to the Lord, centered, only Him. Your mind should be fixated on God's word, God's love, the appreciation that you have for Him. So anything that is asked of you to do spiritually shouldn't hesitate. Amen. Because He doesn't hesitate for you. Amen. All right? Uh, next, in the word that I created, which was what? Spiritual what? Intimacy. Spiritual intimacy. All right? When we think about intimacy, we always have the uh, misconstrued thoughts. But in this sense, spiritual intimacy is a close, familiar, and affectionate, loving relationship with God. Are you in love with God? How much do you love Him? All right, let's run through quickness. All right, the human biology. Read that again for me, Brother Priester. Singing a song is a mnemonic, mnemonic facilitated, facilitated facts, definitions, and concepts of language. Because of the song, its melody, rhythm, which you provide instructors for acquisition of knowledge. This knowledge helps long term memory and cues to retrieve figurative language. So, blessing, God has, our makeup that God has created has allowed us to have such a structure with our brain where we can be able to retrieve information by clues. Those clues is melody, rhythm, imagery, uh, which we call figurative language. Some of those things that we talked about and I didn't get a chance to read earlier um, in our figurative language. Go ahead and I want you to read this one, this one, um, and the last two. Last two and the first two. Some of these uh, words that describe figurative language is something that we've heard before in grammar class, language arts, uh, in English. We've learned these words. What are those words again? So when we're singing songs to God, some words that we hear in some of the descriptive words is a simile. Do we know what we ever heard of that word before? A simile? A metaphor? Right? So we want to read what some of these are. Go ahead and read what a simile is. Simile. A simile uses the words like or as to compare one object or idea with another to suggest that they are like. Example? Busy as a bee. Busy as a bee, all right? Um, give me another one, metaphor. Metaphor. The metaphor states a fact or draws a verbal picture by the use of comparison. A simile would say you are like something. A metaphor is more positive. It says you are something. Example, you are what you eat. Mm. So name me a song that we hear that metaphor in. You are something. You are of value. Anybody knows a song that we sing in the body of Christ all the time that describes something that we are? I am a hard fighting soldier. What? On the battlefield. Are we literally in armor? Do we have uh, weapons? No. Are we we're getting ready to physically fight someone? No, but that figurative language makes us understand that we're hard fighting soldiers. It's figuratively saying what? We are just alike. Every day of our lives, we're fighting the, the tears and tolls of the devil. And we're on the what? Battlefield. But what does the next part of the song say? Bringing souls to Jesus by what? Look at that. Look at that. Look at how our brain works when we're able to identify things by seeing pictures and shapes and colors. We're able to see stuff. And what we visualize, it becomes realistic to us. All right? Give me up two more at the end. Idioms. Idioms. According to Webster's Dictionary, an idiom is defined as 
peculiar to itself, either grammatically as no, it wasn't me, or in having a meaning that cannot be derived from the conjoined meanings of its elements. Example, Monday week, or the Monday a week after next Monday. Mm. Idioms. Idioms and songs. Give me the last one. Cliche. 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 Go ahead. A cliche is an expression that has been used so often that it has become trite and sometimes boring. Example, many hands make light work. Many hands make a light work. Uh, where could we put when the saints go marching in? Where could we put that in any of the uh, the uh, meanings that I've given you from metaphors to idioms to cliches to symbols? I want to be a, uh, give you another one. Uh, this little light of mine, so I'm going to let it shine. Are we really a light? Are we walking around lit up? Can people see us from a distance? But what does it describe? Towards what? Towards God. What is that light? What should the light be? Your what? Lifestyle. Your lifestyle. Your behavior. You see what happens when you start to understand the human biology of singing. Let's go to the next slide. With the human biology, music has a deep biological root from the organization of the brain. If music is a biological imperative, which means it's value, then its importance in human life is considered greater than the common thought. This simply means the, 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 the mindset to understand that God has given us a gift. He has internalized within us, in our brain, the ability to what? And I said this earlier in our session. Do we remember what I said about this earlier in the session? What has God given us? The gift of what? Say it, you said it. The gift of what? There's a million dollar question. The gift of what? S-O-N-G. Everyone say song. I know we, we eat. You know how it is when we eat. <laughs> the, gift, the gift of song. God blessed us and gave us that ability. The gift of song. But it's in us. It, it's internalized in us. I told you before, if you hear that beat, before you know it, some of you is going to start nodding your head, snapping your fingers, tapping your toes. It's internalizing you. So my point is that God gave you something that needs to be returned back to him. It's internalized. Biologically. So then the million dollar question was this. If biologically, if physiologically, God has created music, a song within us, what causes one not to participate in worship service? What is it that's grieving or that you're suffocating and not allowing out? What is causing that? And we talked about these three things that cause this. Do not encourage. You're not motivated, and you're not inspired to say it. All right? Let's continue moving forward. What is encouragement? Encouragement means to receive courage. It's the act of giving someone support and hopes of boosting their courage. We gave examples of what encouragement means when it comes to singing. The story of Paul and Silas being in prison, uh, being beaten, uh, even facing death. But in the midst of facing death, what did they do? They sang and prayed. And that encouragement of them knowing that, listen, I'm not worried about what you inflict on me because God got my back and I'm okay. That encouragement eventually even led to someone being saved by being baptized because of them having so much faith in who? In God. Let's go to the next one. Motivation. What is motivation? Motivation is defined as that which moves one toward an action that changes, provokes, or implies our very being. David said, I desire to do your will, oh my God. Your law is within my heart. Remember, it's not about self. When we are motivated, we're motivated because of God. There's nothing that we did that made God exist. Did you hear what I said? There's nothing that we did that made who exist. Everything that he's done has made who exist. Us. All right? So when it comes to singing, you got to have the right mind state. When it comes to worship, you got to be in the right mind state when it comes to serving God. Next, next one. All right, we talked about how God is, uh, Jesus is interceding for us. That means he's praying for us every day. And not only is he praying for us, but he's also advocating for us. What simply means is, we talked about going to court. Your lawyer is your advocator. That's the individual that makes sure that they, they not only get you out of the uh, consequence that you may receive, but whatever, that, uh, whatever the law or ruling that needs to come down, 
not only does he try to protect you from that law and ruling, but he makes sure that what? The advocate is the voice. He speaks on behalf of the client, just like Christ speaks on behalf of his child. The Bible says, uh, you know, it, it, the discernment of the Holy Spirit is, is to filter that information that we pray. We pray to God, you know, we're trying to, you know, and in Christ, look how beautiful that is. He takes what we want to say and he presents it to his father. Yes. And says, this is what our brother priest is trying to tell you. Mm -hmm. That's how Christ works. Because God does not identify you unless you have the blood of his son. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move on to the next. Uh, the song R. Kelly. Uh, I guess I'm going to make you all sing this because you look, you look like you just ate and you get that itis. You know what that itis is? <laughs> yeah, so, you know, we did that. I, I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. I think about every night and day. Spread my wings and fly away. I believe I can soar. So we run through the open door. I believe I can fly. I believe I can fly. I believe I can fly. Inspiration is important. This is what inspiration does. Uh, inspiration brings us to uh, having hope, having peace, comfort. Our promises are never broken. I said it before earlier, you know, a man can promise a woman the world. Mm. Or even a woman these days can promise the man the world. Amen, brothers? Amen. <laughs> but only God can keep his promise. Because a man don't even know what he's doing tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Let alone what he's going to do for the rest of his life. Mm -hmm. All right? So you're never forsaken. God always forgives you. Compassion. Rescue you in the time of storm. He's a shelter in the water. Time of storm. Grace. Love. And someday if you live right and die right, you'll get up right. Get up right. Yeah. Amen. And heaven will be your home. Let's go to the uh, next one. Now we're talking about building healthy relationships. Quickly. How to build healthy relationships. And I'm just going to go through a marina. Number one. Cannot compromise the word of God. Stand on the solid foundation of God. Amen? Amen. Number two, keep going. Exemplify the passion for the Lord. The church needs to see that you're serious about the business of serving God. Any ministry leader, when a congregation sees that you're serious about the business of serving God, they don't have a problem following you spiritually. When they see that you're inconsistent, then they become what? Inconsistent. All right, let's go to the next one. Number, number three, you've got to have love and care for the what? Church, what? Despite, despite what people say about you, I don't like that brother. I don't like that sister. I don't like them songs he's singing. They're dead. He can't sing. Well, listen, if you're called to do God's work, guess what? Church, let me say something to you. Let me see what this is. This is here. Can anybody hear me? You will be ridiculed as a Christian. You will be talked about as a child of God. Your feelings will be hurt for Christ's sake. So if you get into this business uh, desiring the world to love you and like you, that's not going to happen. Amen. You know why? Because how can they love you? All the young people want to be want to want to have uh, the uh, sociability in school. Want to be popular. Uh, want people to value you as a child of God. That, that's not going to happen. I don't care what you choose to do in school. And what happens is, and I talk to all the young kids that I work with all the time, and I, I talk to and I speak to, and I find that a lot of the youth, especially that are Christians, and even at the church, they do things because they're just influenced. Everyone is doing it, and I don't want to be the odd person out of not doing it, because I don't want people to clown me for not doing it, so I do it. And in actuality, you look in the mirror at yourself, you will say to yourself, I look stupid. Why? Because I'm doing something that I truly don't inside believe that I need to do. Guess what? That's the Holy Spirit talking to you. Telling you what? You know, that's not what you want. Let's look at it from a church perspective. Holistically. How many things that we do in the body of Christ where we know that's not what we should be doing? You ever felt that way before? To be honest with you, that's how a lot of church split. Because they know they shouldn't be doing That's the things that are not about. So you build healthy relationships not only for the love and the care, but we read it earlier. A healthy church has to have what? Unity. Everyone say unity. 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 Got to have unity. If there's no unity in love, no matter what the preacher preaches, no matter how hard the song leader sings, how, how strong the prayer is, how great the scripture reading is, if there's no unity and no love, there's nothing. Nothing. All right, let's go to the next one. Uh, you must be unified with the what? 
Power of vision. We said this earlier. Um, remember you said this. Can you repeat what you said earlier? What do you see at the bottom of the picture? Yeah, crossing guards sharing with the children what they need to do. The children do not know if they're in harm's way or if they're safe. The only person that knows that is who? The crossing guard. The crossing guard sees everything. That represents God. We're his children. He directs our traffic. He sees things that we don't see. And when he says it's time to proceed, we do what? We go. All right? And this represents us. This is us. Not only does it represent us, but even in the church, there's things that we probably want to do as song leaders, but the minister has the vision. And he says, not yet. Why? Because there's things that he sees by his wisdom. And if we love God enough, we'll be humble enough to say, I understand. I'll wait until this is my time. All right, let's move on. All right, let's move on. All right, so now let's get into um, what we need to get into. This is the second half. So my brother, yeah, amen. Let's just say amen. amen. I'm about, and I, I know some of you were here and you're like, oh, we did this earlier. And I understand, but the Bible says tearing one for what? Another. Yeah. And that's the job. We got to help each other up. Uh, we got to encourage each other. We got to empower one another. We're not crabs in a barrel. You know what a crab does. What do you think a crab does? As soon as you're trying to get out, what happens? You don't do that. Not in the body of Christ. So our job is to encourage each other. Amen? Amen. 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 So let's go to blend and musical styles. Remember, get your notepad out, your pen and pencil. This is our second session. We're going to try to knock this out in about 30, 35 minutes, and we'll be done for the day. So get your notepad and pen. I appreciate everybody that has been writing and taking notes. Um, and then the last thing we're going to talk about is, um, matter of fact, let's, let's hold off on this real quickly. Let's go to um, the um, old wine skins to new wine skins. Um, I need some help passing this information out here. Um, this article is entitled The Autonomy of the Local Church. Um, we want to talk about this. The question with this whole idea, the ideology of traditional versus contemporary. Uh, songs that we used to sing from the hymn book. This, this hymn book right here, this hymn book right here, brothers and sisters, is too old-fashioned. This is too old-fashioned for us. We don't want to do these songs anymore, man. These songs are outdated. You know, my grandma, my great-grandma, my big mom, she sung these songs. I'm tired of these songs. I want to, I'm just over the glory land. We done been there several times and been back. You know, just on top of Jesus. Oh, you know, you know, we, Jesus coming soon. When is he coming? Like, you know, we sing these songs for a long time. It's understandable, and it's fine. But then we're looking at all of the contemporary songs. Um, our God is awesome. Um, looking at all my tribes. Looking at um, Raise Your Mercy. Uh, give Myself Away. Looking at all these contemporary songs that we sing in the church uh, now uh, that are uh, that are relatable to the modern times. So let's look at the difference between um, old wine skins to new wine skins. I want to read something to you, and then from that we want to read the article. I want to read the article, and then I want to get some of your thoughts on that because this is I want it to be an open discussion. So I want it to be an open uh, discussion. So let's take a few minutes to let everything get passed around. So old wine to new wine skins. I need uh, Brother Jones. Can you give me, are you, uh, Brother Jones, can you give me Mark chapter 2, verse 22? Old wine skins uh, to uh, new wine skins. Hymns in contemporary worship. All right. Now I want to ask the question, is traditional hymns dead? No. Yes or no? Is traditional hymns dead? Okay. okay, I want you to keep this thought. Remember what we talked about earlier when we read the articles? Uh, even those that came in uh, a little late to just share with you what we have been doing. Um, so I, I know now we're going to move. So I'm in, I'm in the box. So I'm going to stay in the box. Um, so now what we, what we understand is earlier we discussed, we read an article called an open letter. And this open letter article that I gave is going to transition to what we're going to discuss right now about uh, old wise kids, new wise kids. Uh, if you missed it earlier, we broke off into groups. And everyone was able to read articles. And the two things I actually do what was what? I what? I wondered and what? I noticed. So I'm going to read uh, this article of autonomy. And I'm going to ask questions with that article. Is traditional hymns dead, number one? Has, this, has it received its time and has it gone? Uh, is traditional hymns no longer relevant to most worshiping communities? Are there signs that they are making a comeback? Is there a growing resurgence of hymns in worship service? Um, I want to uh, read 
this article to you, so follow along with me. Uh, we begin the opportunity. Man, matter of fact, let's do this. Uh, let's let's all read. Let's let's read a paragraph a piece, and let's go down the line. So, and if you can get the mic, then. Matter of fact, my brother, you just go ahead. You read. You just read for a uh, second time. You better read. The autonomy of the local church. Truth for the world. And truth for the world is actually a website. The website is a is a collaborative website of all churches of Christ, mainly one church of Christ that uh, sponsors and funds the website. So if you're interested, you want to go online and, and check out this website. Some really great informative uh, information for you uh, regarding your spirituality. Uh, so go ahead. The meaning of autonomy is independent or self-governing. Now keep that in mind. The meaning of autonomy is what church? Independent. Is what church? Independent or self-governing. Okay, so keep that in mind when we're thinking about this old wine skin and the new wine skins. Okay, continue. The church we read about in the New Testament is made up of autonomous congregations. The word church means the called out. What does church mean again? Called out. Echo seal. Continue. It is used to describe God's people who have been called by the gospel. Mm -hmm. Second Thessalonians two. 14. They have been called out of the world and into the service of Christ. The word church is used in the New Testament in only two senses. First, it refers to the called out people of Christ in all the world. This is the universal sense. When Jesus promised in Matthew 16 and 18, upon this rock I will build my church, he was including all believers in all the world in his church. Thus, he was speaking of the universal church. Second, the word church is used in the local sense. Now, the church, the word church is used in what sense again? Local. So keep this in mind. Everyone say local. local. Okay, so locally you have the Southwest Church of Christ. Locally you have the North Side Church of Christ. Locally you have the Jim Street Church of Christ. Locally you have congregations. All right, locally. Okay, all right, continue. I just want to keep this in mind. That we're all universally the Church of Christ because we're all believers of the doctrine of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ by all obedience of the gospel. Amen? Amen? But there is locality of the church. All right, keep that in mind. Keep it. When Paul addressed the first Corinthian letter to the church of God, which is at Corinth, he was speaking to a group of Christians in Corinth who met together to worship and serve God. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2. The universal church is made up of all the local congregations everywhere. Paul referred to this when he said, all the churches of Christ salute you. Romans 16, 16. The word church is never used in the Bible in a denominational sense. Mm. A denomination by its own claims is not the universal church. Most denominations claim to be a part of the universal church along with all other denominations. Therefore, a denomination is smaller than the universal church. Mm. But most denominations are made up of many congregations. Therefore, a denomination is larger than the local church. An organization smaller than the universal church, but larger than the local church, is not found in the word of God. Denominations were established by men. They exist without the blessing of God, but they are completely unknown in God's word. Now, this, that's very important. They exist without the word of God. The blessings of God. That's key. That's key. Everything that have breath, do what? Praise the Lord. If you praise the Lord, you got to know how to praise him. And he has given us a blueprint by his New Testament on how to doctrinally praise him. And when you do what he asks of you to do, the book of Malachi, the Bible says, he will rain down blessings. Right? Open up the windows of heaven, pour yes. down blessings. Yes. Yeah. So the question is, you know, because we look at the congregation and the quantity is not as large. Are we being blessed? We think about that. We think salvation is in numbers. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. but, is, but what about the quality of the word? And we're going to learn right now what that all means when we go into this whole idea of old wine skins into new. That God wants quality worship. Mm -hmm. Did you hear me, church? All right. No. God wants quality worship. Stop a moment. Yeah, that's the you're missing your shot. God wants quality. Yes, Continue. Yes, Churches of Christ are autonomous in government. Each one is independent of all others. Each one has its own leadership. We read in the New Testament of churches in a district such as the churches of Galatia. Galatians chapter 1, verse 2. However, there is no district organization. Each of the churches in Galatia was self-governed. It is easy to see that God's plan for his church was for each church in each place to be self-governed. 
When Paul and Barnabas returned from their first missionary journey, they again visited the churches they had established. Now, I was going to skip this paragraph, but I want this to be read because it's important. This is what the church needs to work towards. Read that sentence. They appointed for them elders. Let me read this in every church. Every church has its own eldership. When Paul wrote to the church of Christ in Philippi, he addressed his letter to the saints in Christ Jesus that are at Philippi with the bishops, elders, and deacons. The apostles Peter commanded elders to do what? Tend the flock of God, which is among you. They were not fed, uh, they were not to feed other flocks, but they were to shepherd the flock which was among them. This is the local congregation where they were members. Eldership is important, church. Amen? Amen. That's one of them to be said. Let's skip over behind uh, the next, let's flip over the page. Let's go to congregations can corporate, um, corporate with one another and doing the Lord's work. Congregations can cooperate with one another in doing the Lord's work. We have examples of this in the New Testament. The Jerusalem church sent Barnabas to help the church in Antioch. The congregation in Antioch sent help to the churches of Judea when they were in need. Paul received support from other churches in order to be able to preach the gospel to the church at Corinth. Titus and another brother were chosen by the churches to take a contribution from the churches in Macedonia and a shot to Jerusalem. These churches cooperated with one another to do the Lord's work. However, they did not form a separate organization apart from the local church. There was no city, province, state, or regional organization. Drop down to the last paragraph. And this is what I want us to all tie in. Go ahead. God's Quality way works. is best. God's way is what, church? Best. Quality works from God's way is best. You read it. The church belongs to the Lord. The church belongs to Brother Robinson. Lord. The church belongs to Brother Jones. Lord. The church belongs to the praise team. Lord. They bring it in the crowd. They bring it in the young people. Lord. The church belongs who? Lord. So God. Let's keep reading. He pushed it with his own. Oh, he died for the church. So that means he has all power. Amen. Amen. All right. So continue reading. Often men are not happy with the way God has organized this church. Stop. Did you hear that? Yeah. Often men, generic men and women, are not happy with what? How God has organized them. I understand that we should be singing, but what's wrong with enhancing our singing by this? Colossians 3 and 17 says what? And whatever we do, in word or in what? Deed. Word about what we say, deed, and what we do. Do all in the what? Name of who? So if I got any questions, and I want to change God's order of worship by incorporating a contemporary style, which I feel, I feel, that can be enhanced and, and, and bring more young people and grow the church. You know who I need to consult? I need to have a conversation with the Lord. Amen. And I doubt the answer that I want to return is going to be what's in my favor. <laughs> Amen? Amen? And I think oftentimes we play God. Amen. And that's the problem. That's the problem. When God, when God told Noah to build the ark, he told him how to do it. He specified exactly how to do it. That's right. If Noah didn't use gopher wood and he used uh, oak, what do you think would happen to that shit? What do you think would happen to the ark? It wouldn't have floated, probably. If God told Noah to, to put one window in, from my understanding, and he put three or four, that's an issue. That's a problem. But it's still the ark. Say that again. Let him say that again. Repeat that. It's still the ark. It's not God's ark. Amen. Wow. It's not God's ark. Whatever we do in what? Word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord. Now I want us to read, continue reading. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna share about this autonomy real quickly when it comes to traditional and contemporary. And then I want to ask you questions. I want to know what you feel about that. And I want us to get some Bible answers for those things. Okay? Continue. They think they can approve upon it. Mm. They must understand that they have no right to change what God has done. Mm. If they change the organization, name, worship, or work hold on all those Hold on now, hold on, no, slow, slow down, slow. If they change the organization, what did it say again? Read that. If they change the organization, they change the organization. Organization. That means the structure. Keep going. Name. Name of the church. Worship. Worship. Hold on now. Keep going. Or work of the Lord's church. Or work of the Lord's church. They are disobeying God, not man. Mm. Peter said, "What? I rather what? Obey God, Obey God rather than what? Yes, 
Amen. When worship is changed, I said that before, if it's not monitored, you be careful. You're going to get a, you're gonna get a tumor. Mm -hmm. And when a tumor metastasizes, what happens? You got to start an amputation. Mm -hmm. And if you don't get it soon enough, mm -hmm. the whole body dies. Mm -hmm. Think about it, church. How many congregations you know have died? Mm -hmm. Based upon the things that have been implemented to it that was not of God. See, God's word, I truly believe, will stand forever. But what about his people? What about his people? His word is going to stand forever. But it's the people. God told uh, the people when he brought them out of bondage. Remember when he said, if any man looks at that serpent, they will live, they shall not die. You know what the people chose to do? There were people that said, I'm not looking at that. And what happened to them? Yeah. God has always made a plan of salvation for us, but we have not stood to it. So let's go really quickly. Are oh, you finished? Let's read that last sentence, and I want to move into that last thing. All the way Let us be content to do the things that God has told us to do. Let us do them in the way God has told us to do them. Let us call them by the names God has given in His Word. When we do this, we can be sure we are pleasing the Lord. Old and new wineskins, many of us believe that traditional hymns are dead. Some feel that our old is better. Uh, we ever thought about that? We have heard conversations like that before. Old is better. Going back and singing those old hymns, they have meaning to them. They mean something. Some believe new is refreshing. Amen? Uh, some believe that life is needed in the church through song. Some believe that there is secular conformity when we change up our songs. We are becoming second. We are moving into uh, what we know as, as denominationalism. All right? And then others just truly believe that we need to be able to give the proper directions and still allow, as you said earlier, a little contemporary worship. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily mean that we're changing the doctrine of God, but we do want to sing some songs that have some, uh, some, some uh, exuberance. That's mm -hmm. the word I want to use. All right, so for example, what's wrong with saying uh, a song like You Are the Words in the Music? Mind you, that's a song. It's scriptural. The Bible says, speaking to yourself in what? In Psalms. Oh, it's a song. Have anyone ever sung the song Psalms 27? Anybody ever sung Psalms 27? Psalms 43? Psalms 23? Anyone? It's a song. But let me ask you a question. Some of us, if, if one Sunday I got up and I began to sing all uh, songs all out of the Bible and I did not once touch the hymn book, who would be upset? <laughs> I'm asking, who would be upset? Be honest, who would be upset? God would be upset? Yes. All right, I like it. So, see, now, now the floor is open. So the question would be, um, the difference between traditional and contemporary, is there a difference? Own to wine skin. I want to open up the uh, floor for discussion. What do, you, what do we think about that from traditional? My brother said that God would be bothered um, that we wouldn't sing from the hymn. So let's let's discuss that. Well, give it a minute. Give, give it a minute. I want to discuss that. And don't be afraid. Don't be nervous. Go ahead and, and express. That's what we're here for. We're at a workshop. Well, the Bible says that we should do all things decently in, in order. In order for everyone to be, be participating in that service, everyone would have to know what it is that you're singing in order to give praise to God. It just can't be an individual thing. It has to be a collective thing. And the song leader who is leading that is responsible for leading the congregation in that. Mm -hmm. What if I led a song on the projection screen and the words were not the actual hymn, they were just lyrics? And everyone was able to see it and look at it and sing collectively with it. Would that be okay? Scripture. Well, I think sometimes it would cause some people who uh, maybe not to even think about what it is that they're doing mm -hmm. because they're more or less, uh, it's something new to them. Mm -hmm. And being new, uh, sometimes your mind isn't focused on what it is that you're really supposed to be doing. You're more interested in singing the words 
and actually focusing on what the words are saying. Anyone else has anything to say on that? Well, it was good. Good question. I don't see hands going up. And this is going to transition in our next uh, session. Yes, uh, Mike, let me get the mic, because I can't move from in the box, so I can't move too much, because uh, noise is going to be made. Uh, well, you know, I, listening to that response, would that be the same as if you were reading it from the page, you know, versus the screen, you know, because you can be reading it from the page and still have the same mindset if you're not connected to God. Mm -hmm. I think it would be the same in any type of act of worship, when you come yeah. in and you know, you're, you're praying, and it's, you're praying as if you're reading a script. You're not really invoking the prayer. You know, I, I think there needs to be, like we talked about earlier in the discussion, there needs to be an intimate connection. My main concern for what we're discussing today with old to new wine skins is that most of us that have been in the Church of Christ for over 20, 30, 40 years, 50 years, we, we, we've been brought up under the traditional teaching of hymns. And now that there are new material that's coming in, so most of us, we feel as if, if it doesn't remind us of the world, um, the content where, in which this was written behind doesn't have the same meaning with the new wineskins. It doesn't have the same meaning. So, oh how, I, oh, how I love Jesus has significance. But songs like um, Our God is Awesome may not have that much significance. Um, and I don't know why, but I'm, I'm asking the question because I want to I challenge your thoughts. I want to know what would be wrong if we took all the hymn books out and no, and no longer used the hymns and all we used was contemporary songs. How would you feel at the church? Brother Robson, I just want to, uh, to, to add to that as well. Um, there is something about change in the Church of Christ mm -hmm. uh, that it's hard for us to adapt to at times. Because there was a time when there were no songbooks. The church has been singing a cappella since the first century. They didn't have songbooks in the first century. They chanted at one time. Right. And so no, there was a time when songbooks were introduced. Mm -hmm. And that was a change. So what was a new wine skin now was an old one. Okay, so now we have modern technology. We, mm -hmm. There's a lot of churches that have the songs on the PowerPoint on the screen. Mm -hmm. There are some people, even preachers I've heard talk about, have a problem with that. But, you know, again, that's the change. We're, still, we're singing with the spirit and with the understanding. Everybody can see the songs and we're singing. And so that's just another uh, 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 method of us singing. We went from chants, hymns, songbooks, and now PowerPoint. I don't know what's coming up next. God have mercy. But, <laughs> but, but, but we're singing. So, so let, me, let, me, let me make it. Let me make it. Let me make it a little more difficult. Let me play devil's advocate. I do this with my song leaders and trainers all the time. So now we went from projection screens. That's really good because you have some that you have to move. You know, we're not we're not watching the VCR anymore. Yes. I mean, <laughs> I mean, we still collect them, but you know, we enhance. We don't we don't. Do little kids said, "What's the VCR?" Yeah, what's the VCR? We don't, like, we don't we don't watch the VCR tape. But let me let me get a little more intense. What about uh, implementing a bass mic? Let me throw that out. There. Having a bass mic. Wow. What's wrong with having a bass mic? What's wrong with having two? What's wrong with keeping the steady beat and keeping the, the, the rhythmic notation of the song, the measures? Let's throw that out there. You know, what if I say from now on, uh, you know, uh, Brother, uh, Brother uh, Melvin says, you know what, we're going to implement this and this is what we're going to do. How about the congregation? And we, remember, we're talking about, what is the article? The what? Autonomy of the church. See, we're missing it. We're talking about that God gave the autonomy to the local congregation. What simply means is that the local congregation, under the leadership, agrees to that autonomy. Mm -hmm. Then under God, they have that opportunity to do that. What I will say is, is that you still got to be conscientious of what you do right? with that liberty. Mm -hmm. And that's what this discussion should be transitioning into. I'm just playing that was advocate. I'm with you. Everybody. All right, I'm with you, but I want you to understand, I want you to think, because churches of Christ have already, there's many that transition already in that direction. They're not having this discussion. They have, they got a whole praise team that's sitting on one side, you got the females with the mics, they're doing the alto section, you got sopranos on the right, you got a bass mic up top, you got five soul leaders is up saying they're already there. Why are they there? And then you may say, well, the church autonomy is okay, but then when you look and watch them where I'm going, and, I, and, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm fellowshipping with them. I'm looking around, and I'm watching members that's not singing. 
They're just watching. And they're looking as if they're in concert. But the Bible says, speaking to your... That's not happening. So now, have they done the act? No. So these are the thoughts that you need to have in mind. It sounds good, but what is it invoking? And then if it's not invoking what God has asked us to do, and you're really not praising God as you should, then is your worship in vain? You got to think. Think about this. Go ahead. Um, someone, go ahead. Hey, and you, you go ahead. Like you said, this is God's church. And that has to be the first, you know, point of reference in us giving worship to him and praises to him in our mindset and our heart and how we're doing that. And that's the first is it's, it's your intention. What is your, your pure intention? And if your intention is pure and honorable to God, then you're going to do things decently in order, you know, and abiding by what his word is and his will. You know, I'm not saying that because, you know, the whole pray people take things and they, they want to entertain because they're looking at what's happening in the world and they see, you know, what's happening on TV. They see the preachers. They had some uh, show on television, uh, pre Preachers of L.A. And, that's we all have mercy. and, you know, how all of this stuff was glorified. And then they think that these kinds of things need to be implemented within the church. And that's what the problem is. You know, we see all these models out here. And uh, we're not going back to what the Word of God says that we should do. Uh, other questions? I know we had, my brother had to say that for a while. Um, yeah, he can speak loud. Yeah, you can speak loud. You know, because you got a question. Yeah. Right? You got a question? Oh, okay. Go ahead. Um, I think just going back to what we were talking about earlier, um, Brother Wilson said uh, that all things be done decently and in order. If we were to take, you know, the song books and throw them out and we just sing just strictly songs, uh, the Bible number one commands us that, you know, like Brother uh, Jones said, uh, we have to sing the spirit and the understanding. So what we're singing is in accordance uh, with God's word. We understand that this is true that we're singing because like we, we agreed to earlier, uh, we can sing a lie just as easy as we can tell a lie. Uh, if we understand what we're singing and what we're singing is the truth, there should be no problem with that. But also, we have to take into consideration what we're doing, not 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 only as a congregation, but as, as song leaders and, and, and leaders in general, the um, Bible says, you know, things may be lawful, but not expedient. Um, yeah, it's okay. it, might, it might seem okay to do it, but is it really necessary? And in doing so, what is that doing to the church um, as a whole on an autonomous level? What is it doing to the whole and, and, and I want to say to you, you made a valid point. What is it doing to the church holistically? We're not talking about a few that's edified. Oh man, you sound good, bro. You jamming, man. You up there, you get it. This sounds wonderful. But it's the entire congregation that if I do the whole entire church walk away with, man, that song blessed me. Or I was I was touched. Or do a few come and they got their praise. And sometimes it's mainly those that's that's in the worship team. <laughs> they they feel good because they were jamming. Alright? But then it goes again to, as the articles say, although we're autonomous, we're set apart. Yes. We're called out. Remember says that in the first paragraph? Yeah. So you can't say, man, I'm a member of the Church of Christ. Man, you got to come and hang out with us, man. Our worship be, man, we, we're amazing. Come on. And then, then they come, and then you jamming <laughs> just like they jam. And then they say stuff like this, man. Y'all ain't no different than us, man. I'm just like, I'm, you better come on over to Ida. You owe me. You got to come over to Ida. You got to come over. You owe me. Now I came to yours. You got to come to mine. There's no difference. And then before you know it, if you don't be careful. Yeah, you be a well, what happened to Brother Um? I said, what happened to Brother Snodgrass? <laughs> Brother Snodgrass, the L over there, my pistol. Like, what? <laughs> He was, he, was, he, was, he grew up in the faith. And that's what the Bible says. It says what it says. Broad is the what? And many. And we don't like those things that are narrow because the things that are narrow is not fun. I'm being honest with you. To us, it's not fun. It's just not fun. You know, I, I want to I enjoy myself. I don't want to open up a hymn book that says 1956 on the copyright date. 1956, come on now. I want to sing something in my time. This is going to transition to our last slide. Blending 
new musical styles. It's going to be amazing. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. Uh, three more questions. Uh, let me go with him first, then you, and then one more. Anybody else have one? I want to I wanna talk to my young people, too. I want to ask my young people a question. My question to my young people is, how do you feel about the song service here at your church? Don't be embarrassed. Think about it. How do you feel about the singing? Do you feel like it can, it, there could be more songs added? Do you feel like we can kind of change up on certain things? I want to know from your perspective why, because you're the future. You're the future of the church. All right, so go ahead. I just want to comment on what you know. I just want to comment on what Joe's brother here. The Bible says God gave us a purpose. We have a purpose. We got to remember that. It's a purpose of what we did in the same and how we sing. Right. And the lyrics that is posted, whether it's PowerPoint, script, what it is, we got to be careful with what lyrics we we are singing to God. We got to always keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. It's not the church. The church collectively is singing one as per each individual is singing, but it comes as a whole group to God. And we are singing to Him. So we have to be careful with the lyrics that we are singing and remember our purpose for singing. Because if we don't be careful, we end up singing to a divine being, something secular. We do all the time. We end up taking an R&B song and a hip-hop song and switching it up and it becomes something Christian <laughs> oriented and spiritual. You know, and it has nothing to do with praising God. You know, I mean, if, if Mary Mary ain't singing this to God and me, they're trying to get young people out the club. That's understandable. But you leave that there. When you bring it into the sanctuary, it gives it a different meaning. Because now you're praising God with something that is not pure. And God is a pure being. So I invoke people that write songs. Go ahead and write songs. Sylvia Rose writes beautiful, beautiful songs. Matter of fact, she's a member of the Church of Christ, but a lot of denominational uh, churches have taken her songs. They sing Mantra Roman Crown all over the place now. And that's, that's a sister from the body that has written that material. All right, so last question. Uh, my sister. You know, I was going to say a lot of times when you talk about autonomy, different churches of Christ and different cultures sing differently. Amen. Um, can you repeat that up close on the mic, sir? Right here. I said, you talk about autonomy, different churches of Christ and different cultures sing differently. They sing, you might you go to a congregation where they sing from the hymn book, by the note. Yeah. Joyful, joyful, yes, we adore yes, thee, God of glory and of love, right? Yeah, and then you come to us, joyful. There's cultural differences, but like you said, God recognizes mm. that. And Be because the motive. Exactly. It's the motive. Mm -hmm. God sees the motive of man. He sees, the Bible says, the heart mm -hmm. of man. And, they, and, and, and the certain congregations sing more of what I call praise songs as in this totally focused on God, you're amazing, mm -hmm. you're wonderful, we worship you, we praise you, whereas some congregations think, Lord, help us, Jesus, you know, it's, it's different cultures and emphasis. And just my opinion is that we need them both. My opinion is we need them both. Mm -hmm. some, some churches sing all praise, all praise, all praise. We need a blend. Right. We need them so both. this is what transition into our next one. Blending our musical styles of worship. This is our last session for today. I thank everyone for being so patient and being blessed. I want to say we've had a tremendous workshop today. Amen? Amen. Uh, we had a, such a tremendous workshop today. So uh, this is going to be our last workshop, and then we're going to open up to a Q&A just quickly, and then we'll be dismissed. Blending. Everyone say blending. Blending. Musical styles. Musical styles. In worship. In worship. All right, so let's look at a, a, a way to do it. And I'm going to discuss a way to blend musical styles in worship. There's a way to do it. Uh, you just don't approach the congregation and say, this is what we're singing today. Uh, these are going to be all the new songs. We're throwing all our hymn books away. Um, and we're moving into a different uh, mindset of the church. That's not what you do. Uh, these are, this is the way I would say um, that I'm working towards transitioning some of those songs, my sister, that you discussed into that phase of the hymns, into that phase of worship. So blending musical styles and worship. Number one, one must do what? Pray and what? See God's guidance. Spend time waiting on the Lord in the days and hours leading up to cooperating or corporate 
uh, worship so that God can prepare hearts for what he wants to communicate. He will help with the soul choice when the time is made to what? Listen. Seek God first. Pray to him. Ask him, is this the time? Is this what I should do? Guide my heart, dear Father. Allow me to do what you called me to do. And oftentimes you'll see it. You'll get up to lead a song and you'll, you'll see in the ambiance of worship. It's not the right time. Something can go on. Something can happen. The preacher can preach something. There could be a feel in the congregation. Right now is not the time to, 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 to incorporate this new song. It's not the time. But you got to be in tune with the spirit. And if you're not in tune with that spirit, by praying and seeking it first, you're going to hurt the church. You're going to hurt the church. Number two. Rehearse the true meaning of what? Worship. Rehearse the true meaning of worship. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it. Psalm 24, 1. We worship God to do what? Acknowledge his word and give him what? Glory due to what? His name. God initiates worship by revelation of himself and promises to commune with those who what? That is so important. Did you hear that? Let me, let me, I'm going to read that again. Listen now. God initiates worship by revelation of himself and promise to commune. That means he is connecting himself with those who do what? When praises go up, blessings come down. Yes, sir. That's the connection. You're connected in worship. And I mean, I wonder if God, you, you know what would be just, just amazing? You know, uh, the prophet, uh, what was it? Was it, uh, was it uh, Balaam? Who was the donkey that spoke to that prophet? Yeah, you know, God opened his eyes and he was able to see. Wouldn't it be uh, quite frightening if we came to worship service on Sunday morning and we can be able to open and see who's actually being communed by God mm. in our worship? Mm. You can look at each other, seeing who's being connected. Oh, wow. our power source is off. His is off. Hers off. Wow. His off. His off. His off. Wow. Hers off. Hers off. His off. Oh my. You got to be connected. So the question is, we said earlier, who's really in love with God? And who's really intimately connected? All right? Having the right mind about worship is essential in constructing a meaningful worship experience. You got to have the right mindset to have a great time with the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. If your mind ain't right, you're not going to have fun in church on Sunday. I'm sorry. It's, it's, it's just, you're going to have a bad Sunday. If you don't, I'm sorry. I, I apologize. I'm just saying. If you don't come in with the right mindset, I mean, you might as well go home. You know? You know what I mean? You're not going to enjoy the, the, the worship of God. If you bring your stuff in from yesterday, well, you need to get it right. You need to confess that sin or repent. Or you need to ask for prayer so you can relinquish. Get rid of that stuff so you can give God praise. You can't pour a new wine or what? Can't do it. Can't do it. Pour a new wine in the old bottle, it's going to look. You got to get rid of that stuff. All right? Yes, sir. Go ahead. I was going to say sometimes. I'm just going to say that sometimes the lack of uh, the lack of private devotion has a lot to do with our public devotion. Hmm. So if we're can, you, can you elaborate on that? If we're not spending time in meditation and prayer and study mm -hmm. and developing that relationship with God mm -hmm. privately, mm -hmm. when we come to a corporate setting, <laughs> there's yeah, no yeah. connection. Yeah. So yeah. when you when you're spending that time privately with God and He has touched you and you you're meditating, you're studying, you're praying, and you just you get to that all oh, praise the Lord. You can't wait for worship yes. to praise His name to work. To see how good Lord here, man. Take this mic here. Take this, that's, that's true. That's, I mean, you <laughs> must start preaching. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Take this thing. <laughs> God is good. Rehearse the true meaning of worship. Thank you, Brother Jones. Keep going. Next, next one. Choose songs that are biblically accurate. Oh, that's powerful. Mm -hmm. And the only way that we can do that is song leaders need to be trained. Yes, right. I am putting that on all the leaders, all the evangelists, all the elders. Mm -hmm. You need to get your song leaders to workshops, retreats, seminars. They need to be trained. Right. I thank God for Rupert is incorporating me in these things, going out and teaching, and, and I'm going to training myself. Because he sees a vision in me 
that can help the church. I can't help the church, but I don't know what I'm talking about. So I got to be in a position to get trained. Train your song leaders. There's local events too. Let them go. Well, send me, so we're send me a link, brother. Yes, sir. Send me a link. Well, yes, sir. I will. On that. I got you. Train them. Scripture says to worship in what? Spirit and in truth. It is important to know that God, the God you worship, therefore immerse yourself in the scriptures that reveals him. This doesn't mean that every song has to quote the written word of God. I'm not saying let's get too intense. You know, you know, I'm not saying what I am saying is, but the content should square with what the Bible says. Alright? Be sure that the music you select rightly represents the truth of who he is, not the mere image of who he is thought to be by you. I'm going to say that again. Be sure that the music you select rightly represents the truth of who he is, not the mere image of who he is thought to be. I think this is what God is. God is not on your level. So singing songs that make him e equal to me is not a good thing. I need to make sure that he's superior in everything that I do. I'm looking upward as I praise him. I'm not looking equal. All right, so we got to be conscientious of what we say. Next. What does that say, church number four? Choose songs that prepare. Oftentimes we select songs as song leaders in the congregation. It has nothing to do with preparation. It has nothing to do with preparing. We, we'll break a preacher up with songs that got nothing to do with getting our minds right for the lesson. We'll get ready to bring the preacher up, and his job is right now to share the word of God to saints or to the lost. And we'll sing in the morning, why not tonight? Come on, we got nothing to do. Come on. What is it? I mean, because, because you sound good singing that song, so you picked that one. I got nothing to do with the worship. Nothing. We'll sing, um, you know, the preacher get ready to come up and, you know, he's fired up and, you know, he's ready to go and he needs you to hit this, this, this bad. He needs you to butt. He needs a butt. That's what he needs a butt. He needs a butt so the bass is below. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. And he just come and knock it out. Yes, sir. And then you get up. And you say the old rugged cross. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. That is time. That is time. Preacher need to preach about salvation, and we, you know, at the cross. That's a good song, but it's not the right time. That's right. That's right. But this is what soul leaders need to be trained on. You know to do good, you do it. But if you don't know, you can't be upset or frustrated with the brother. Exactly. You gotta be trained. And that's why our workshops with the vision of our brother Jones and brother Priest and those that's been involved, this is why this has happened today. Just to make you say it is funny, but you know what? You are absolutely right. We gotta get better. Right. Because you have people that are lost that are coming in for the first time getting a snapshot of you and the church. All right? And then it says here, uh, just like a farmer who plows the hard earth to sow a seed, a key responsibility of a worship leader is to spend time breaking up the follow ground of the worshipless heart. That's all you're doing. I said it before. You're getting ready to bring him or her to the throne of God. Mm -hmm. And you're in, the, in all the preacher is doing, you're, you're helping the preacher out. Yes, sir. And then he just, yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're, breaking that, you're breaking that ground up. Yes. So you can get that seed to cultivate and be able to, to, be, able to be planted. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. You, I know you want to say something. Oh, my brother want to preach. I'm trying. I'm trying to. No, 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 no. no but you know, and not just for the preacher. Not the church is prime too. A good song and then going into a good message. The church is ready. It's ready to worship. Praise the Lord after a good song. And that's one thing I want to say that Brother Rupert has told me several times. You know, he'll come. And one thing that I love about Brother Rupert, um, and I haven't, I haven't sung those type of songs, but Brother Rupert, he'll sit down and document, and he'll come to me afterwards and say. You know, uh, that song was, was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. That was a good song. Right on. Mm -hmm. But I don't, not this song. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, the church is shouting, they clapping, they rocking. Mm -hmm. uh, one time, and, I, and it's on camera, so he, hopefully he might hear a little. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I saw him for communion, uh, Salvation Has Been Brought Down. Mm -hmm. But I slowed it up, mm -hmm. and it was jammed. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, we, we, was, we was praising. Well, we, I'm talking about, I mean, the church was, was ready. And he said, he said, he said, it was wonderful. You changed the arrangement and everything. But the congregation, from what he's known, 
being there that long and having that healthy relationship with them, they're not ready. You gotta respect the minister, the man of God. Why? Is because he wants transitional praise. And what's good about that is, is that the church is going to get there because of the healthy relationship that I'm building through my ministry. But give them a chance to develop. Does that make sense? Yes. And oftentimes we don't give the congregation a chance to develop. They, we expect them to be they are ready. We do. Most preachers, we just, ha, we expect them to be there already. Soul leaders, come on now, y'all ain't saying it. What's going on? You're slow. We expect them to be there already. And some of them, they got, they got to develop. Yeah, yeah. They got to get there. And that takes love, compassion, and it takes these types of events mm -hmm. to keep prepping them and encouraging them. Uh, you had a quick question and we want to move on uh, to the next slide. Yeah. One thing we should consider as well is uh, not only uh, the members that are there, but we select the songs, but also uh, we need to consider uh, visitors. We have a lot of visitors, and your song selection and the flow of what's going on it will affect the entire worship suite, especially for the visitors. Um, one thing I've noticed, you know, with our song leaders and even selecting songs myself is that, um, like you said, we, we have to be prepared, but at the same time, um, in selecting those songs, that we understand that as Christians, those who are seasoned, those who have been here, all right, it shouldn't matter, you know, what song we sing when the brother comes up with a song. Yes, but for the visitor, like you said, who has not gotten there yet, who doesn't even have a clue of what it means to be there? We need to take into account those as well, too, because those souls are equally as important. Amen. I want to uh, get to the last slide. Thank you, my brother. Last slide. And we're going to conclude for today. Thank you so much again for your patience and uh, enjoying this workshop. It's a blessing uh, to be here in Hartford, Connecticut. I actually was born here. I was born in this uh, city. You don't know that. Uh, but I was born in this city, and my parents... I was brought up at Northside Church of Christ. Um, and then uh, my godfather, if anybody's familiar with the congregation, is our brother Bowling. Uh, anybody familiar with Brother Bowling? Amen. Uh, my godfather, great man of God, uh, born on home, wait for that reward. Amen. Um, but uh, yeah, so I, my sister and I were born in Hong Kong. So, you know, this is a familiar setting, and I thank God so much for coming back home, you know, and, and fellowshipping with the saints. And I thank you so much for being patient uh, to allow us to be here. Uh, and I just want to, if you, if you have not received, anybody did not get this article, Worship the Truth. The reason why I want us to get that is because on the back, this is how we're ending. We're ending it right now on the back. I want you to flip over the back. Flip over the back really quickly. Select souls which are relevant. Do not be afraid to teach a new song that really expresses what God is doing in the greater body of Christ. This is important. This is something that I do uh, when I'm home. Um, I make sure that I teach the song, but I don't teach the song during worship. I've done it before, and it works well, but you've got to have that ability. If you have that, that gift to teach a new song and everybody can get it, everybody doesn't have that gift. Um, but we have at our congregation every last Wednesday of the month we have our song and praise service. Mm -hmm. And I introduce two of the three new songs at that time. And then we, you know, we transition them into our, our, our major worship service on Sunday. All right. But it says, don't be afraid to try a new song. Uh, God is doing the greater body of Christ, one with a fresh perspective. But don't overwhelm them by teaching what? Too many songs at one time. One at a time is a good rule of a thumb, or dust off an old favorite, and oftentimes there's a lot of beautiful songs in this hymn book. Amen? Yeah. Amen? We don't. We haven't sung all the songs in this hymn book. Yeah, but there's so many others. And sometimes we got to revisit those. We got to go back, dust those things off, and we got to sing them. So that's the musical blend. It's good to have some fresh, new style of singing, but it's good to breathe life back into our old wine skins. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's flip this over real quick, and this is the helpful hints as we conclude. Song leaders' common mistakes. I'm going to read this. Some of this is funny, but I'm going to read this, okay? Song leaders' common mistakes. Number one, they're not spiritually prepared to lead worship. Mm -hmm. They have other things going on in their personal life. They're sinful, and then they get up before the altar, and they, and they praise God. <laughs> Singing in sin, and they wonder why nobody's moved. Wonder why the message didn't get through. Why? Because you in the way, though. Don't get out. Get out the way. I say, no, no. You in the way. You blocking the blessings. 
because of your sin. Mm -hmm. So if you're not spiritually right with the Lord, what you probably need to do is let the brothers know, ask for forgiveness of sin in that brother's meeting, mm -hmm. and have a seat. Mm -hmm. Because you've got to be an example to the church. Mm -hmm. You are a leader in the position. So not spiritually prepared to lead worship without spending that time building a relationship with who? God. With God. But some leader will find that all his efforts will what? Not amount to much. He's sitting there wondering why is why what am I doing wrong? It's not you doing anything wrong. You need to get it right with God. Number two, failure to worship yourself with what? With who? The people. Number three, failure to give reasons for the various actions of worship. From time to time, we need to remind people why we clap, why we shout, why we raise our hands. And if we don't, we're in the danger of having these things become no more than a what? Tradition. Listen to this word, church. Or a mimic. You know what mimicking is? All we do is, well, they clap over there in the Baptist church when they're excited. So when we get excited, we don't even know why we clap. Why are you clapping? Why are you shouting and yelling? Because what you see when people become emotional, that's what they do. So you mimic them. So the song leader needs to take a time and say, brothers and sisters, if someone claps, this is why. If someone gets up right now before we go into the song and raise their hands, this song shares about having the goodness of God and expressing how much you love it. So right now we're about to go in and, and to praise God and spirit and truth in our songs. And if this happens, let's support that. Set the tone for the congregation so no one doesn't feel out of place if they stand up and clap. Because you know how we do it in the Church of Christ. The moment somebody stands out and screams, thank you, Jesus, we look at them like, are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> You're denominational. <laughs> but we do that. No, we, do, we do, we do that. We do that. Or well, we get up and get our stuff. We go in the back. We go in the back. We do that. We do that. We should do that. Share with them as a song leader. Why? Another thing that we as song leaders have issues with standing too long. We ask the church to stand up every song. Stand up. Stand up again. Stand up again. Stand. <laughs> it's like, I understand, but remember, you also have older seasoned members in the congregation that can't keep moving. And you have to be mindful. Somebody pass out a heart attack, you have heart. It's your fault. It's your fault. You have made them stand 50 times. The blood person arrives up. That's on you. All right? Worshiping. This is another one. Singing too long. How many times we going to sing the same song? We done sung Amazing Grace got, what, 32 verses in it? We going to sing all of those? It's usually better to stop early and leave your congregation one or more than to what? Drag out the service and have the regret coming back. That's 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 serious. I mean, you, you got them standing long and singing long. Ain't nobody come back Sunday night. They're tired. <laughs> all right? Teaching too many new choruses at all one time. That's introducing a new song, and then now you got to have, you know, I want this section to do this, and I want this section right here. You got to do this, and I want the bass. You got to hold this note. Now I want everybody to do this on the count of three. Hold it. And I want everybody in the back of the church to do this. Like, it's, no, no, it's too much going on. I came to worship God, and now I'm out of my worship because now I'm trying to learn a song as if I'm in class and I should be just praising God. All right? Um, teaching too much in between these songs. One of the biggest, look at this, it's funny, where individuals always, when they talk, they have to make comments between these songs. They got to give a sermon there. That's so nice. And I don't have an issue with it. I'm allowed to do that. God bless me. At least you're allowed me to do that um, at Central where I don't preach, but I, I share some information on why the song is important, why we should sing, uh, how God has been good to me. Has he been good to you? Oh, let's notice this hymn. Let's, but then you have individuals that want to give a sermon at, out there. We're going to sing Amazing Grace. You know, God is so amazing. Yeah, he, he's so amazing because he blessed me tonight and he blessed you. He blessed you. You know, yesterday I went down the street and I walked across the street. And I seen this bottle on the side of the street. And it was amazing, dog. So I picked up that lady, dog, and put it in my pocket. And I went into the store. When I went in the store, it was so amazing. This brother looked at me and said, man, you're cool, brother. You can get a free soda on me. I said, brother, thank you for that free soda. So I went down to McDonald's, walked in. I had all these pair of Jordans. The Jordans looking good. The girl looked at me and kind of said, you know what? I like your Jordans. Here's a free sandwich. That was amazing to me. I kept walking. Everything was amazing. The life was amazing. It's like, hold on. What are you talking about? What are you saying? Nothing makes sense. <laughs> Nothing. Why are you doing that? Liberals are looking at you like, 
why is he up there? <laughs> and visitors are looking at you saying, why do you have them up there? They looking for the minister. They walk up to the minister afterward, but brother, uh, you did a great job. That's what they gonna do. Mm -hmm. And guess what that does? First impressions are last impressions. Now, that visitor that could have been touched by the word of God now has a disturbance. Mm -hmm. I may not have come. Mm -hmm. All right. Improper key selection. Testing. 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 Improper key selection. You know what that means? Yeah. When you pitch a song that's too hot, or you pitch it too low. So we're singing, Our God, He is Alive. That is a song of itself that's hot. And then you pitch it too hot. <laughs> there is the only as a blue. Our God, just in the inside. Know where we go in a few minutes? Oh, in a few minutes, you know where we go? Oh, oh, we're not going anywhere. <laughs> Because it's right and wrong. And then I, I've been places where brothers have done it and then they stop singing. <laughs> 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 when it gets to from the star God, the part from the period. <laughs> Hold up, brother, you took us up that scale. Right? So pitching the song wrong, or maybe pitching it low. Pitching it low. Once was lost in sin, but she now the song is so pitched low it drags, and then it loses the relevance of the song. That's why training is important. Okay, not supplying the lyrics for people. That's another thing. Not having the songs up on the screen, not having the hymn books. You just freestyle a song. You sing a song and say, "Sing with me." You'll get it after a while. Yes. No, that's no. I would not advise you that. Not enough repetition of the chords. That's so important. When you're teaching a song, one thing that I was blessed to learn um, under tutelage of Brother Chris Turner is when you sing a song, be repetitive. If you sing a song, sing it again. Sing the chorus three or four or five times. So the congregation can get to know it. And then they're good with you. They're, they're right there with you. But if you sing it one time and then expect them to understand it, the next time you sing it, which is another month down the line, and they've never heard it, it's not edifying. Okay? Uh, and this is another one. Uh, not enough repetition, of course. And this is another one for our older members. Everything is too loud. Um, and when I say that, I mean simply the way we sing in a microphone. So we have to understand how to hold mics. And then also for those that handle the mic systems, they also have to be in connections with the song leaders. And I'm saying this because I have a very strong voice. So before I leave songs on Sunday morning, I go upstairs and I share with Brother Harris that he needs to maybe feed the mics out. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm doing with the ministry of God? I'm already saying I'm ready to sing, I'm ready to edify the Lord, but I want to most definitely make sure that there is no distraction because the devil works well with distractions. Mm -hmm. The littlest distractions, he take you right out of worship. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to do everything I can to say, okay, I sing strong, let me go upstairs and let them know. If you sing too soft and, and members can't follow you, they can't barely hear you, mm -hmm. you need to search your voice, you need to go upstairs and go where you need to go in the sound booth, my brother, you know, I sang those songs. Can you turn me a little bit? Feed my mic up a little bit. All right? So these are things that you probably didn't even know soul leaders had to deal with. You thought we'd just get up and sing. But if you take this as a ministry, you want to most definitely make sure that your ministry is effective. Amen? Amen? And it becomes effective because when we do what we do, look at, look at what it does for the church. Look how easy it becomes for the ministry. And look how uh, how um, influential it becomes to the visitor when we all work together as one team. Amen? Amen. Have you been blessed on today? Amen. 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 Um, I have some other uh, articles here for those that are interested and want to have articles. I think all of the ones that I do have are great reads. Please take them, read them, open your Bible, study them. Um, I do want to ask two questions on what I talked about. I want to give two more gifts. And then after that, uh, the workshop for the day uh, is yours. Um, let me ask something difficult. Difficult. 
Uh, all right. Uh, in the workshop, I talked about autonomy. Without looking at your notes, um, what does uh, what does autonomy mean, and what is the church called? What you you got you you got one early. You came to know. <laughs> my man is ready though. My man, my, that's amazing. He's a young man. He's a young man knowing these questions. That's awesome. Yes, yes, yes. Man. Yes. Yes, and what is the church called in that arm? <laughs> no, go ahead. What is the church called? What do we call it? What are we called? What is it? Give our round of applause. My sister was ready to jump on it. She said, oh, hey, hey, oh, hey. All right. Um, you go last. So, you go perfect. I can't reach over the threshold. That's the point. All right, uh, and last, uh, well, two more, I need two more. Uh, yeah, remove that, remove that. I want to ask for the priest the question, since he was running my power to see if he knows. Because he said, I, I got it all in my mind. <laughs> all right, so um, two more questions. And I want to ask another one of my, my youth, because one of my youth got one earlier, so. Uh, don't be shaking your hands off you. What do you call a name tag? Uh, so um, I talked about uh, blending musical styles. Can someone from the youth tell me, uh, give me two things that you can do to help blend musical styles? What are two things you can do in order to blend musical styles? What are two things you can do to blend musical styles? What are two things you can do to blend musical styles? Number one, it was I was five different things. One was this, two was this, three was this. You got it? Go ahead, say it. You, what was number one? You, you, either one. You look. You had your hand up. I think I know. Go ahead. I think about incorporating the song. Uh, yeah, that's how you blend. But how do you do that? The first thing I should do before I do that is what? Prepare the church. Motivation. No, 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 no. Blending yeah. musical styles. I'm going to give you a hit. That's why. Girl, I'm trying to feed you. I'm not trying to do it. I'm not trying to do it. The first thing you do is what? You already got you something. What'd you do? The first thing you should do, I'll give you the first thing, is pray. And what else should I do when it comes to blending the music? One thing that I talked about, making sure that the songs that I sing are what? Oh, give her a round here. Amen. Amen. All right, come on up here, girl. I, I, can't, I got to cross this threshold. I, I, got, I got one more, one more, one more. I want one of my, uh, my, my young and heart members. The young and heart members. I want one of them. Uh, we just talked about helpful hits of a song. We just read. Name me three things. Don't look at. Don't look. Don't. She gonna look right in my face. She gonna. <laughs> Name me three. Three helpful hits. Three. Give me three helpful hits. Um. In the in, yes, ma'am. Three helpful hits that a song leader should keep in mind. They should be relevant. Relevant. They should be. Um, and I have my own hands. Uh -huh. Go on. Now. Three helpful yeah, hits. Three uh, things, things that you don't do. Things that helps you as a song. Yeah, as a song leader, you should you should um, be able to you should know which songs to use and where so that it will enhance the the ministry or the service. Give me one more. Um, that was kind of the same. Something that is something that we should do that's repetitive. That's not a good. You said repetitive is not a good thing? I thought one thing that is repetitive that's not a good thing to do. The same songs over and over again? It comes from. Yeah, key selection. Give me another one. Oh, no. Give me, give me, give me one more, more. Go ahead. Standing too long. Give me two more. Singing too long. Don't be cheating. <laughs> Okay, 
everything in there. Or she, give, give the, the young ladies the love. I want out there. Well, I have given out every one of my gifts. Um, thank you so much. I want to, uh, first of all, well, let me give one. I, 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 I'm, I'm going to get another Christmas gift away. Uh, uh, and this is this one is a nice is a nice nice uh, tote bag for your Bible and you know your, 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 little, your little iPad. You know, got a little zip on it. Zip it up. You know. So this is a big question. Big question. Can someone tell me um, all what were all of the sessions? The title of the sessions that we discussed. Today? The title of the session. The first session was what? How many we had? Three, right? We had four. four. Um, why we sing was the first one. Okay. Don't look, don't look. Uh, I'm looking down. I was only doing my first one. I know building healthy relationships. Yep, that's right. Um, blending music styles. Yeah, it doesn't happen to either one. And the second one was. Um, there was a part of that, but what was the title? Oh. Oh. How to allow members to participate. Yeah, participate. So now put them together. Oh. So now we're here. Oh. Now, but you got one. Now, <laughs> now, now, now put them all together. What were they? Thank you. Oh, um, while we sing, participation and motivation, blending music styles, and um, building healthy relationships. Okay. That's the old one. Amen. So I'm also preaching some too. But let's, and, and what's the other one? Old? Old and new? Wineskin. Amen. Clap it down for my son. I'm going to give this to you. And the zippers are on here and they, and they work too. You know how you do it. So you put the song books in here and get you. you get it hey, amen. Let the church say amen. amen. I just want to say, God bless each and every one of you. I thank you so much for being attentive. I thank you for being here. I thank you for allowing yourself to be productive spiritually in the Word. All I can say is, Lord willing, I look forward to seeing you on tomorrow uh, for worship service. I believe I'll be here for worship service speaking. Um, all I can say is God bless you, and I bid each and every one of you God speedy, and as I always say, remain in here. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Let's show some love, everybody.